the Halsafini Hypogeum. Welcome to the show everyone and please remember to like this video and subscribe to the Lost History channel if you are yet to do so as we continue to battle the shadow banning of our channel. Now on with the show. Wait till you hear this. On the island of Malta, a structure exists that was constructed in a practice known as Cyclopean rigging. And if you consider the hidden depths of reality and the importance of understanding and establishing a true timeline of the ages, then a journey begins into a chasm of ignorance and a minefield of misinformation that isn't incorporating the truth into the real age of this planet helps us and also hinders us. It hinders us because a realization occurs that a seamless education has bewildered our understanding and it helps us because we now know the timeline of history including many false narratives are beginning to be rectified in open beliefs. The hypogeum on Malta is enormous and consists of subterranean structures excavated 2,500 years before Christ and according to UNESCO, the ancient architects and engineers used cyclopean rigging to help lift huge blocks of coralline limestone to form a structure that was perhaps originally a sanctuary which later became a necropolis in prehistoric times. A program of monitoring and research, launched in order to understand the microclimate of the hypogeum, was followed by a project for the conservation of the property, designed and implemented in the 1990s, and this meant that a massive project to acquire houses directly above the site was established, and the houses dismantled. Such is the importance of this site with light levels within the property also strictly controlled with visitor numbers completely limited and these measures have helped to maintain stable temperature and humidity levels which continue to be monitored closely. The things that are present here on earth much to the rediscovery in modern times as to what they are isn't solid proof that the things we talk about are true just because they exist. Anyone can tell us things in a believable way, and when the subject at hand doesn't differentiate from what is being explained, then a belief that the story must be true begins without any solid evidence. The point we are trying to make is that we don't know about the past. None of us do. The ancient past of this planet, including the time of the pyramid builders of Giza, are so long winding into countless years of history that has seen the sun rise and set hundreds of thousands of times means that only the raw earth based material can weather this storm. Only can stone survive the ages, nothing else. The strange structure on Malta may be the result of a previous advanced civilization who were moving underground for the purposes of preserving their culture just like we see at the Valley of the Kings in Egypt and many other sites across the globe. The ancient Malta residents also apparently had the means of excavating massive amounts of bedrock before history tells us it was even possible, leading many to wonder if indeed they had machine operating tool to achieve such dramatic work. Known fully as the Malta Salfini Hypogeum, which translates as underground cemetery and according to UNESCO World Heritage, this is the site that was discovered in 1902 on a hill overlooking the innermost part of the Grand Harbor of Valletta in the town of Paola. Visually stunning to look at, this was one of the most enigmatic and unique prehistoric monuments in Malta, which seems to have been conceived as an underground cemetery originally containing the remains of about 7,000 individuals, though the eventuality of such destinations of knowledge may need readdressing. Originally, one entered the hypogeum through a structure at ground level where only a few blocks of this entrance building had been discovered with its form and dimensions remain uncertain. As in the true age of construction, though the dating is based on ancient historic Maltese activity which is documented and may have been in existence during this written period 2500 years before Christ but simply remain hidden during the period of reoccupation and actually dates back past the last cataclysm of 12,500 years ago. 
The plan of the Hypogeum itself is a series of three superimposed levels of chambers cut into soft global Jorina limestone. The earliest of the three levels is the uppermost, scooped out of the brow of a hill with a number of openings and chambers for the burial of the dead were then cut into the sides of the cavity. The two lower levels were also hewn entirely out of the natural rock, allowing for some natural daylight to reach the middle level through a small opening from the upper level. But artificial lighting must have been used to navigate through some of the middle level chambers at the lower level, which is 60 meters below the present ground level. Candles would have burned out the oxygen, so it is assumed that they use mirrors to access these areas with light, but no evidence of this concept has ever been produced, leading to a hypothesis involving early lighting using batteries in jars like the ones we see at Baghdad. How else would they light up such a dark area of an underground chasm? Let us know your thoughts on this one below, guys. The Lost History Channel believes that one of the most striking characteristics of this hypogeum is that some of the chambers appear to have been cut in imitation of the architecture of the contemporary above-ground megalithic temples. Features include false bays inspired by megalithic trilithon doorways and windows. Most importantly, some of the chambers have ceilings with one ring of carved stone overhanging the one below to imitate a roof of corbelled masonry, and this is characteristic of the way in which some of the masonry walls of the contemporary above-ground temple chambers are corbelled inwards suggesting they too were originally roofed over. Some of the walls and ceilings of the chambers were decorated with spiral and honeycomb designs in red ochre, and these decorations are the only prehistoric wall paintings found in the Maltese Islands. In one of these decorated chambers, there is a small niche which echoes when someone speaks into it. While this effect may not have been created intentionally, it may well have been exploited as part of the rituals that took place within the chambers. Excavation at the site have produced a wealth of archaeological material, including numerous human bones, which suggests that the burial ritual had more than one stage, as it appears that bodies were probably left exposed until the flesh had decomposed and fallen off. The remaining bones and what appear to be some of the personal belongings were then gathered and buried within the chambers together with copious amounts of red ochre, with the use of the ochre seemingly to have been part of the ritual, perhaps to infuse the bones with the color of blood and life. Individuals were not buried separately, but piled onto each other. Artifacts recovered from the site include pottery vessels decorated in intricate designs shell buttons, stone and clay beads, and amulets, as well as little stone carved animals and birds that may have originally been worn as pendants. The most striking finds are stone and clay figurines depicting human figures, with the most impressive of these figures showing a woman lying on a bed or couch, probably known as the Sleeping Lady. This figure is a work of art in itself, demonstrating a keen eye for detail. The Malsafini Hypogeum is a unique monument of exceptional value. It is the only known European example of a subterranean labyrinth from about 4000 BC to 2500 BC. The quality of its architecture and its remarkable state of preservation make it an essential prehistoric monument which is one of the best preserved and most extensive environments that have survived from the Neolithic period possibly much older. With the exception of the fragmentary remains of the above ground entrance, all the key attributes of the property, including the architectural details and painted wall decorations, have remained intact within the boundaries leaving a time capsule to a past destination that experts have already squeezed into the historical narrative of 5,000 years. But it is actually a survivable pod from the cataclysmic event of 12,500 years ago or before. The main threats to the preservation of the hypogeum are the fluctuating temperatures and relative humidity levels within the site, as well as water infiltration and biological infestation. Described by Historic Malta and UNESCO as one of the two most important prehistoric burial sites 
in the Maltese island and is very well preserved. Unlike the fragmentary remains that usually survive from the above ground structures of this period. The unusual preservation of the rock cut chambers allows the study of a system of interconnecting spaces very much as they were conceived and experienced by a Neolithic mind and the imitation of the interior of megalithic temple built above ground not only provides evidence of the core bowling system that was used to roof the temples but is also important in terms of the development of human processes of cognition and representation. And this site has also yielded several important artifacts of great artistic significance like the Sleeping Lady, a miniature ceramic figurine that is widely held to be one of the greatest masterpieces of prehistoric anthropomorphic representation. But what do you, the subscribers of the Lost History Channel, think about this place anyway? Comments below, guys, and as always, thank you for watching.